When it comes to fitness, the word functional is one that is severely overused. I'm going to share with you today though an exercise that really is functional in every sense of the word. Walk with me. Okay, so the suspense probably didn't really work there, seeing as the name of the exercise is most likely in the title of this video. As you already know, I'm talking about loaded carries. What you might not know is exactly what a loaded carry is or just how many benefits there are to this exercise. So a loaded carry simply means that you're carrying something and then going for a walk. And it's up to you how you carry this thing. There's lots of different versions of the loaded carry, but of course you can invent your own. And the idea is simply to move a really heavy object from one place to another. And that's why this is the most functional exercise in loads of ways, because it's something that we actually do in real life. When you carry shopping bags home from Tesco, that's a loaded carry. When you move furniture, that's a loaded carry. And it's also a move that any superhero workout should include, seeing as this is one of the key moves of the superhero or action hero is to lift the damsel in distress or the bloke in distress out of the burning building and look all heroic doing it. That's harder than it looks, even if you've got quite a light partner. There's a bunch of different types of loaded carry. The most popular one that people might be familiar with is the farmer's walk. And this is where you've got a big heavy weight in either hand uh, dropped down by your side. And basically we can do this by holding two dumbbells, one in each hand, or two shopping bags, as we said, two tubs of paint, whatever. Using a trap bar is quite a good way of doing it. This trains tons of stuff. It trains your traps, of course. And actually it's a good idea to maintain a slight trap flexion, so a minor shrug, so that your shoulders aren't too depressed whilst you're doing it. Um, it also trains your core because you're keeping yourself upright. You're using both the abs at the front and also your posterior chain to keep yourself nice and upright whilst you walk. It trains your balance as you're walking along. It trains muscle endurance a whole amount. It trains your grip strength, tons. And actually, if you think about it, when you're carrying shopping or when you're carrying um, furniture, the grip is one of the first things that gives out. So this is a great way to build that kind of endurance. Um, it can even fix your gait when it comes to walking, when it comes to running. This is something that they do for some runners. Loaded carries is a great way to fix your biomechanics of the way you run. So tons of benefits there. You're using all these stabilizing muscles in your core, in your forearms, in your legs uh, that often don't get a look in. And this is fantastic in your hips in particular. This is great training for your hips. And this again prevents you from falling over, gives you more balance, can improve your jump height. And it's just something that a lot of people don't do that maybe they should be doing. And then there's the tons of different variations on this move, each of which trains different things in different ways. So you've got your zercher carry, which is where you carry it like a zercher squat. So you're clasping your hands together and carrying a barbell in the crook of your elbow. You have an overhead carry, which is where you're carrying either one weight or two weights um, overhead. You can do that with one hand or two hands. So you could do a kettlebell, you could do a barbell. Um, you have your goblet carry, where you're holding something like a goblet squat, such as a big heavy kettlebell. You have your suitcase carry where you're carrying something in one hand on one side. Bear carry where you're grasping something towards your chest, whether that's a, a weighted sandbag or a bag of cement, whatever you like. And all these different variations will of course slightly change the muscles you're targeting, alter the challenge. So for instance, when you do the suitcase carry because you're on one side, you've got to, it's an anti-lateral flexion uh, exercise, meaning that you've got to stop yourself bending to one side. So this really turns it into an exercise for the obliques because the other side is preventing you from bending in that direction too much. Then when you have the weight in front of you, you're using your posterior chain more for the same reason, to keep yourself upright so you're not bending forwards. And this is great for fixing a lot of the problems that we cause ourselves by working at the computer, you know, because we're leaning forwards and stretching forwards and our poor posterior chain gets all stretched and weak and it's why many of us hunch over. So this is a great way to fix that. So using different variations like that can do a world of good. And then you can introduce more variations on top of that. So for instance, another way you can use a front-loaded carry is to use a pinch grip and hold two um, plates together. So you grab two uh, weight plates, pinch them together, and then you're using your grip to squeeze those weights together and prevent them from slipping through. So now it's not only gonna be great for your um, core stability and your endurance, but at the same time you're training your grip. And like I say, when it comes to these kinds of functional movements that we do in real life, the grip is often the thing that gives out first, so that's a great option. I said earlier that you could do shrugs at the same time whilst you're walking. There's no reason why you can't do curls, although you'll find actually that many of the front-loaded carries are a great isometric hold on the biceps as well 
Anyways, I was reading about this one guy, Costia Tzua, something like that, a boxer, apparently, who would sometimes, as a form of training, pick up a kettlebell and then just carry it for an hour. So he'd just go about his usual routine or he'd do some kind of workout and at the same time he's just carrying this kettlebell the whole time. And apparently this guy had fantastic core stability and strength and power in his punches. As you'd imagine, he probably had insane muscle endurance because, well, try it, it's incredibly difficult. But this is a great form of incidental training. There's no reason that you couldn't pick up a kettlebell. I'd say start with something fairly lightish and then do your unload your dishwasher and that's a fantastic way to get a little bit of endurance training whilst doing something that's normally quite mundane and boring so again get creative with it you can go up or down stairs which i will say is potentially dangerous so be really careful doing that you can turn them into um, lunge walks in order to turn it into a leg workout there's tons of different options so the best way to approach it is to use a whole different bunch of them to use different combinations in your workouts and that way to really train that core stability. And this is the kind of stability that will make you harder to push over, better at wrestling. It will improve your squats and your deadlifts because you'll just feel more stable in, in one spot. You're less likely to injure yourself when running because again, more stability, you're less likely to fall over. It will improve your balance and all of this is just great. It also builds muscle endurance, like I said, and that's great for your work capacity. It's great as a finisher at the end of a workout just to really test your endurance, your muscle endurance and cardio to an extent. This is a great form of resistance cardio. And that then means that you can lift more as you build up your work capacity, you can lift more, increase your volume, increase your intensity, and thereby train yourself to not uh, experience fatigue and not experience overtraining as quickly. It's great for testing the nervous system. In terms of how heavy you should go and how many sets and reps you should do if you wanna get the most benefits, uh, that all depends. The main thing, the most important thing, is just that you're progressing in some way. And that's something else that's fun about the loaded carry because there's several different uh, metrics that you can try and improve on. You can lift heavier weight, you can walk further, or you can try and complete the walks more quickly. And again, there's different ways you can mix it up if you want to change your training session. So you could use it as a, as a finisher at the end of the workout. You could go for distance one time, you could go for speed another time, or you could move weights across the gym. Now, you'll be even more annoying for everyone else in there, but get a pile of uh, weight plates, pick them up, carry them to the other side. And again, this is a really functional, this is the kind of exercise that you might actually have to do something similar to in the real world. The key thing is to make sure that when you're lifting that weight, that you keep your body in a good uh, straight upright position. If you're bending over too much, then that means that you're not um, being able to counter the weight and that could potentially cause more damage than good and it's not beneficial. So it's better in that case to go slightly lighter and then walk further or walk for longer and then to drop it once you start to find it too heavy. One more technique tip is to take relatively short steps. If you take larger strides, then you're spending longer with your uh, center of gravity and your knees not nicely aligning. So take small steps forwards and that way you're also less likely to fall over which would be a really bad thing. However you do it, give it a go because it's something different and that's, again, the main thing. Just trying something different is always fantastic for building more strength and stability and making your body more adaptable and improving your overall performance. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please consider leaving a like. Please share it around. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think or if there are any other cool training techniques that you'd like me to look into because that's what I love to do. If you'd like to follow me on social media, then I'll leave my Instagram and my Twitter and my Facebook links down in the description. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see my workouts and my uh, when I post new videos, etc. That's where I'm most active. Thanks a ton for watching and stay tuned if you want to see more on bodybuilding, uh, fitness, martial arts, productivity, technology, all that usual stuff. If that sounds good, then thanks a ton for watching and bye for now.